It's difficult to give kind of precise estimates of the number of people with uh, those disorders. Uh, I mean, the, the official numbers are something like about 2% for children and about 4% for adolescents. Um, but that's going to very much depend on what kind of definitions you give um, and whether you're talking about very clinical diagnoses or whether you're talking about uh, kind of more general, general notions of what we mean as depression. I mean, child and adolescent psychiatry only really started as official organizations uh, after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So child and adolescent psychiatry as a discipline is actually one of the newest parts of psychiatry. Uh, and um, there could, especially the use of medication for children uh, has only really started to happen in uh, in the last 20 or 30 years, and more kids now are on drugs like SSRIs, um, and there's this been increase in the number of um, the number of kids on stronger medications like um, uh, mood stabilizers. Uh, and so they get diagnosed with bipolar. And so this, this has been increased the number of kids with bipolar. And then, of course, there's been a lot of uh, kids diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. Uh, that, that's at least part of it. I think part of it also is um, it's part, it becomes part of the culture. You know, it used to be, I mean, when I was a kid, I'd never heard of anybody having a, a mental disorder, uh, but now, and it's one of the things that people think of quite a lot. If, if their kid is having difficulties, then uh, one of the things they think of first is, well, maybe my kid has some sort of psychological disorder, and maybe I should see a doctor or a psychiatrist to try and kind of sort that out. So I think uh, the the change in the numbers is is related to a cultural change too. So it seems that one way that you get attention is to say, well, a lot of uh, British teenagers are now depressed. Um, now, to what extent that's based in careful clinical studies of uh, childhood and adolescent depression, I'm not so sure. You know, I, haven't, I haven't really seen the, the numbers. I, it doesn't seem to be there's been a massive change in the number of uh, young people who've been diagnosed. Um, it seems more like you, know, uh, you, know, you do a sort of rough and ready estimate and, uh, and you say it's related, to, uh, the change in circumstances is related to um, the kind of mental health problems. Uh, and it seems that well, that's, perfectly, that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do as a sort of publicity tactic and as a way to draw, to, draw attention to problems which are really legitimate. Uh, Clearly, if, you, if you're a young person and you don't have a job and you don't have a chance of getting a job, that's a real problem. But it does seem that the, the overall numbers uh, of depression doesn't change that much over time. And it doesn't change mu that much from place to place um, if, you, if you're very careful about doing the diagnosis. I think one of the reasons is to do with the availability of drugs, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and partly you know, there, there are fads in psychiatry. Right? So uh, there are these you 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 get these news stories, and it doesn't seem that it's really representative of, of a major trend, but. Uh, you do get these news stories of like two, three, four-year-olds, especially in, in the United States, who have been uh, not only diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but then people put on antipsychotic medication, uh, and uh, and people worry very much. They think, well, how can you possibly diagnose a three-year-old with a psychosis? Because you know, they're not that closely related to reality in the first place. Uh, so it, it, it's. Uh, there's this cultural trend, and, and you also see kind of the, the certain psychiatrist really pushing it. I mean, it seems like you know, probably if you go, if you go to a psychiatrist in the UK, you you would be almost impossible to convince them to give your two-year-old uh, antipsychotic medication. But if you, uh, it seems like there are peop 
certain areas or certain groups in the USA where people are just more ready to contemplate that sort of action. So there's, uh, it doesn't, even if it isn't a whole kind of uh, agreed practice, so it's a, I think it's a combination of the readiness of the industry and the, the, the medical profession to accept those things and for people to seek those sorts of approaches. I would say that um, philosophy, I mean, sometimes what happens is you have psychiatrists doing their thing and you have philosophers doing their thing and you kind of, uh, the philosophers write, write for the philosophers and the psychiatrists write for the psychiatrists. Uh, and in some ways, you know, that, that's okay, but that's not the ideal situation. And I think what you, what you want m much more of is a uh, dialogue between the two areas and you want a kind of productive work between philosophers and psychiatrists and psychologists so that they become more open to each other's uh, ideas.